A dishwasher at Yale University has lost his job after smashing what he said was a racist stained glass window. This happened at a dining hall. Uh, the dishwasher was African American. His name was Corey Menefee. He said, quote, I took a broomstick and it was kind of high. I climbed up and reached up and broke it, he said. It's 2016. I shouldn't have to come to work and see things like that. The stained glass window depicted a black man and a black woman picking cotton. Um, and he just said, that thing's coming down today. I'm tired of it. He put himself into a position to smash and just poked it with a broomstick. And actually, there wasn't any you know, yelling or screaming or any sort of display of anger. He just... He'd had it on that particular day, but he actually has been let go of his job. A Yale spokesperson spoke with Gawker and said, an incident occurred at Calhoun College, a residential college on the campus of Yale University, in which a stained glass window was broken by an employee of Yale, resulting in glass falling onto the street near a passerby, endangering her safety. Um, so, you know, Corey has come out and said that he didn't actually mean to harm anyone, and it seems from people that were there that there, this wasn't an act of anger or aggression. Like he said, he was just sick of seeing this racist depiction I mean, going into work. I act of aggression regardless. Right, but what I mean is that he wasn't... Being he aggressive didn't create more of a scene than just breaking the window. Yeah. You know, and given the racial climate in the country, it, I honest, I don't, I don't blame this guy. He shouldn't have to go into work and see that. What do you think? Okay, um, so I definitely see that side of things, but I am a, I, like I had a huge argument with Amir earlier yesterday on this particular topic because okay. I have this belief that we should 100% keep the, that sort of, uh, like the, that, that dark part of our history intact as much as we possibly can. Because um, I'm gonna be cliche here, but history does have a tendency to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. It's very cyclical. We constantly see the same type of like demagoguery, like the same type of dictator uh, leaders coming out, <laughs> Donald Trump in America, <laughs> yeah. like Hitler. Uh, and I think that if we kind of, uh, if we take these sort of images that depicted this terrible, horrible time in human history where humans were just vicious to one another, just behaved like animals. I mean, worse Literally than Literally enslaved yeah, other enslaved humans. enslaved other humans is the worst thing you can do. Um, and I think if we kind of push this sort of stuff down and act like it didn't happen, I mean, even though it did, and yes, we still teach it in schools, but if you're not constantly reminded, I think that it, it sets this dangerous precedent and it opens up opportunities for people to say stuff like, well, uh, you know, there's no racism in America anymore, as you know, so, uh, yeah. you know, but this whole Black Lives Matter thing is actually kind of racist. Uh, or reverse racism, as a lot of racists like to uh, say, which yeah. is a ridiculous thing. I hear your point on we absolutely should not erase um, racism from the past of this country because it's so important that we do not repeat the past um, and that we are aware of how we got to the system that we are currently in, which we can all acknowledge, especially now, as a flawed system. However, where I'll disagree with you is on the on having a stained glass window depiction. Because that, to me, think of where, where you see stained glass windows. You see it in churches. Well, this to is celebrate. a dining hall slash church. Like right, it's but, a like, old... but you see it in churches to celebrate saints. So a stained glass depiction of slavery, to me, is like you're exalting slavery. You're like you're having light shine through, giving it sort of this elevated importance that I, I don't agree with. I think that you know there are paintings and museums, and the, absolutely there is a place for remembering this part of history. But I think that just having it there as sort of a beacon of slavery is super inappropriate and offensive, especially, you know, we can't imagine how it must feel going into work as a black man in America, given what this country is going through. Oh, that's what um, it looks like. Yeah, there you go. So that's a picture and of the And that's Calhoun as well, right next to him, who is, uh, mm -hmm. it's, his presence on Yale campus is also quite controversial because he was he an was, advocate of slavery. Yes, he was in defense of slavery. Yeah, um, so, yeah so this is something I've thought about, yeah. like, extensively uh, as soon as I looked into the story. And I was thinking, like, what do we do about these people that um, were great individuals otherwise, but were slave owners and mm -hmm. were just horrible and didn't think that black people were uh, equal, like, like for example. At all equal. Um, it, was, it was Thomas Jefferson, right, that owned, uh, no, it was, was it Andrew Jackson or Tom, Amir? Pretty sure both. Well, uh, which one Thomas was, Jefferson. Thomas, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson is the kind had like a secret family. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, it's just, it's, it's, it's really interesting to think about because, um, like, what do you do? Do you just completely disqualify all the things that they've done um, in other facets of their life? Because, like, is it, uh, the question I'm asking is, is it acceptable at that time to 
not have a hard stance against slavery mm -hmm. or is it not? Because I feel like there were people out there at the time that still thought slavery is kind of fucked up. You know what I mean? Right. There was never like a time where absolutely everyone thought slavery was okay. There was mm -hmm. never that, that was never a thing. There was still mm -hmm. always people that advocated for uh, you know, liberating slaves. Right. So, in a way, it's it's interesting. Like, you can can you be a good individual elsewhere, uh, like in other instances, mm -hmm. and still be an important like a historic figure that should be celebrated for its accomplishments when you were openly in defense of slavery. Right. I think you bring up a really good point of historical re relevance versus progress and social progress and how do you how do you equate them both how do we live in a world in a country specifically that is so divided on this issue where we absolutely need to acknowledge our history and our origins but at the same time we need to acknowledge them for the shitty policies that they were and how and how do you do both what? and how do you um, recognize the accom the accomplishments of one person uh, while, also, while also recognizing their super bad qualities and uh, super uh, dated and inhumane um, yeah, so, policies? Yeah, so here's, here's the example I'm going to uh, put forward here. Okay. So um, I think Genghis Khan is one of the best examples of historic context, right? Like right. in relevancy. So when you look back at all of the things that Genghis Khan did, he's a, he's a celebrated, very important historical figure. He basically changed the entire uh, European landscape. The reason why there are certain like Anglo-Saxon nations wherever they are in mm -hmm. the world is because of the uh, uh, barbaric, um, uh, like, Mon like the Mongolians coming over and and basically taking over and pushing Anglo-Saxons and all these other mm -hmm. um, cult uh, all these other. Uh, nations to where they are now. Mm -hmm. So you can't deny its historic relevance. You can't deny that he was a great and powerful figure. But in the end of the day, they raped and pillaged more effectively than anyone else in the history of say. mankind. So, but why? But when you think about Genghis Khan, no one ever thinks about him like Hitler. So the mm -hmm. argument that I'm making is like eventually, once we move further away from slavery, once we have moved further away from uh, World War II, for example, in a lot of, and we, when we completely look at it objectively mm -hmm. and don't have any sort of emotional attachment to all the people that have died, I feel like we will look back at these historical figures. We won't celebrate them. Mm -hmm. We will. I don't think we will ever celebrate Hitler, but we won't be able to deny the impact he has had, or we won't be able to deny the impact that Thomas Jefferson and Calhoun and all these other people have, regardless, and, and not really focus on their, right. I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but I feel like it's a generous. On slavery. I feel like it's a generous comparison to compare Genghis Khan, who you correctly said changed the entire landscape of how we. Well, Hitler did as well. R right. Um, I mean, he did, but he also didn't. Uh, not he not. A settled philosophy behind what he was doing. What, he was Gen just a conqueror. Yeah. No, no, but see, that's exactly what I'm saying. During, during that's the reason why you're looking at it. So but if, that's like, if Hitler was just a conqueror and he was just trying to like be that, but like he wasn't. He had a philosophy behind him. Where By the way, a lot of historians agree with me, including Dan Carlin. But, um, but No, I mean, basically what I'm saying is that Genghis Khan is a generous comparison to compare him to uh, John C. Calhoun. You know what I mean? In, yeah. this, particu in this particular story... Yeah, he doesn't have the same impact. I'm just saying, like, do we, on college campuses, because, like, political sensitivity is, is a hot-button topic on college campuses right. currently. Everyone is now sensitive. There's, like, this PC versus, like, there's a censorship versus free speech argument all the time. And it's kind of like, I obviously don't want to allow bigotry or racism to run rampant amongst college campuses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I also don't think that we should ever censor certain parts, ever um, uh, never bring up certain parts of our history, just because these people uh, of, of great accomplishments also were doing horrible things. Right, and, I, and I, I agree with you to that respect, but with regards to a stained glass window, I think that can come down. Um, but we want to hear from you in the comment section below. What do you think about this? This is a larger conversation, so please let us know. Historical relevance, uh, social progress. I'm Grace Baldridge, this is Assam Piker, and we're going to see you next time on Pop Trigger.